What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are talking all in about the flukes. Matt did a video last year talking about some of the little tricks and tips he does on rigging a flute, fluke. So today we're gonna do kind of an all in, an in depth, the rigging, the gear, the techniques, all of that stuff wrapped up into one video. It is summertime, it is hot out, that's why we're sitting here in the shade. But uh, a fluke is one of my favorite baits to fish through the spawn, through the summer, and into fall. You know, you start off, you catch your your, your pre-spawn fish on it, moving up shallow, you catch your fry garter, garters, your post-spawn fish. You know, when you're fishing a frog or top water and the fish are blowing up, they're missing it, you fall it behind with that real subtle fluke action, they eat it, it's an awesome bait. Fish it hard on a super line hook, braid, top water bait. It, it's so universal. There's so many different ways you can use it, and it catches big ones. And uh, yeah, what do we got? It certainly does. <laughs> We're gonna talk about three different rigging styles. Uh, we'll talk about traditional fluke fishing first, uh, and then I'm gonna talk about a couple unique ways to do it, ways that you can really adapt to fluke use it for things you've never been able to use it for before. Some of the stuff we covered last year, some of it we didn't. Uh, and then Tim will talk gear and kind of recap. Uh, but I mean, everything he said is dead on. The Fluke is an overlooked bait. I mean, everybody owns them, don't get me wrong. Everybody owns a pack of freaking Zoom Super Flukes. <laughs> but how often do you pull it out? And how many scenarios do you use it in? Do you just throw it on busting fish? Do you just throw it in the morning? Uh, do you fish with it in 40 feet of water? Right. Do you get away with catching giants on it on a spinning rod? We're about to talk about some stuff. Why don't you talk about traditional and we'll go from there. Yeah, traditional, a Zoom Super Fluke, you're gonna take a, an EWG Super Line hook. Here, bud. You're gonna tie it on. You definitely wanna use the Super Line hook because it's, it's a more stout hook. It's a thicker hook, more material. So it actually is a weighted. So it, it gets that real methodical, that dying bait fish action. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weedless, so that's where it shines right now in this, this post-spawn, this summertime. It's, uh, it's a, a weedless jerkbait. So you get that, those fish to trigger, to react to that darting action, that dying bait fish action, and you can fish it through grass clumps, through tules, through dock pilings, any of that sort of stuff. But it's completely weedless, Texas rig it, skin hook it, and you throw this on your traditional, what, medium, seven, seven foot, yeah. seven and a half foot, medium heavy rod. Just pick that and, one up uh, right off my boat. Yeah, right there. That's a that's a nice setup right there. That's the <laughs> NRX with the titanium. 853, Feels not Feels like too I'm bad. Not, not holding anything, but yes. <laughs> For us mere mortals, we uh, use any, any 734, seven and a half foot, four power action rod, and you can and and uh, catch Little fish, big fish, and everything in between. But this is the, the, the traditional way to rig a Zoom Super Fluke. And just like every video, down below in the video description, we will link to the different colors, the gear, the hooks, the sizes, all that good stuff down there. You know, the, the one thing that, that we do very differently with that than a lot of people do is most people fish it as a, a soft jerk bait, as right. a slow moving subsurface, twitch it, let it fall, twitch, twitch, let it fall. And we do that. I mean, you've seen in the underwater, underwater stuff footage, yeah. where we're working that bait and you just let it die and those fish come up and look and you twitch it and they're on it. Uh, but we also fish it as a top water. And you should talk about that. Yes, so I mentioned that in the in the intro. So top water, I'm talking straight braid, just like your frog setup. Your, your flipping stick, whatever frog rod you use, whatever reel and braided line you use, tie on a super fluke with a EWG, like a super line hook, just like that. And you're gonna twitch, 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 pause, twitch, 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 and that bait's gonna dart and skip and jump out of the water and then it, it's fun. So <laughs> you can use a fluke, it's super universal but the fluke as a topwater power fishing is something that a lot of people don't do and it's it's a profile and an action where it's going subsurface then jumping out and, and skipping it's just something that the bass don't see uh, very often and it's definitely overlooked and it's a lot of fun to catch them that way it's a blast all right guys second way of rigging we we touched on this last year we talked about we'll call it the banjo minnow rig <laughs> that's what we're going to call it uh if you guys have got a little age on you, you remember the banjo minnow. Nose hooked, you twitch those things. I and mean, that is literally what we do with a fluke. What's awesome about this rig, well, it's twofold. 
One, you can finesse with it in ways you never could before. And two, it has a phenomenal hooked up ratio. Let me show you the rigging. And, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna explain what we learned when we first started doing this. Stuff, yes. Yeah. We didn't know that bass almost always eat a fluke head first. Because when we were catching them on an EWG hook, they just wolf it, you'd hook them and that's that. Well, when we switched to this method, this hook is way out on the nose and all of a sudden we're hooking these fish down in the back, way down, roof of the mouth, all the way down. We realized they were taking this thing head first the entire time. So what I'm doing here, owner CPS spring, medium size. Screw it into the nose of the fluke. I'm just gonna screw that all the way in. And I screw it all the way down until it literally starts to disappear inside the bait. It's basically gone, okay? And then I take my little Gamakatsu EWG finesse hook and I nose hook through the material and through the CPS spring and back through the material. So now it's in the spring, it's stuck. I still have total free flowing movement but by screwing it all the way into the material, that helps keep it pegged. Because if you leave that spring out front and do this, you'll tend to have fish when they're jumping and thrashing, they'll spit that whole thing off and you have to put a new spring into a new bait. But this way that spring will stay in place, you're hooked into it, and you fish this the exact same way. You can fish it slow, methodical, you can fish it hard and fast, but when they eat it, they eat it head first, and that thing turns around in their mouth, and they're stuck. You've got them, and you've got them good. You don't have them skin hooked. You don't have them stuck up in the corner of the mouth. You've got them good, right up in the roof of the mouth every time they wolf it. Where this really shines, where this is going to benefit you is when you get around good fish that are finicky. Clear water fish, because the fluke is great, and you'll raise giants up on it, but if you're in that crystal clear water, they just, they just cruise away. But this method, I can change, this is a one-aught. I can go down to a size one or a size two because it's just a nose hook. There's plenty of gap there. They can eat the whole thing and you can drop down to 10 pound line, eight pound line, six pound line on a spinning reel and get those fish to commit. It's a big bait, it's a big profile, but you can throw it on six pound with a little hook and you hook them so deep, you keep them pegged. You have no issues and you're gonna convert a lot more of those aggressive followers, those aggressive chasers, to a committed fish using that rig. Now you can also throw it weedless. Now this, you can do it, with, they make it in the drop shot hook and in that same EWG hook and they both work great. Let me pull this out of here. Put this guy in. Set that right there and now you're weedless rigged you can fish this still fish it even with that nose hook in and around cover around grass under docks you can get it in all those same applications but again with a little lighter line finessier approach yeah the benefit to that you know you can skip these things up under docks or or fish it around cover either way right but with the traditional style rigging you have to use a lot more a lot stouter rod because when you jack those fish when you hook them you got to hook through the material and you you need to to sink that hook whereas that you have that exposed hook point and that's why you can get away with the, the spinning rod in a lighter line right now final rigging for you now for this we're going to talk about the magnum fluke but you could do it with the regular super fluke as well you're going to take a big hook it's an owner jungle hook i believe it's a seven odd isn't it i think so it is seven odd where did I put my weights? Here they are. Same rigging as Tim was doing. You're gonna Texas rig on a giant hook, okay? That's like a seven inch bait, right? Seven inch bait, yeah. Just for size comparison. It's a big bait. Gonna come a little bit short here in the nose. I don't thread as far in as normal. And that's going to leave me the room to take a tungsten nail weight, 
because I'm pinched for space and I put it into the chin from the back. Push that up inside the chin from the back side. Now I'm nail weighted and I want to fall straight down nose first. Okay. Why did we do this? Deep water. This is something your fish have not seen. Your fish have seen a deep crank. If you live in the deep south, your fish have seen a preacher jig. Your fish have seen flutter spoons. You can take this rig because you put your nose weight way up front and the hook itself is so big and heavy, the sucker will sink like a bullet. Now it takes a little time. You got to give it line, but it's going to sink straight down. Let that sucker fall all the way down to bottom. 15 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet. Get it down on bottom, let it settle, and then you snap it up like a fluke. Rip, 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 and let it fall back down on its own. Fall on a semi-slack line, watch the slack. Just like you would be spooning, but with more action. Rip, 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 and let it fall back down. They clobber it. Just like the concept with a deep crank. If you're the guy getting the deepest with a bait they've never seen, they come unglued on it. If you're the first guy on your lake throwing a big fluke in 40 feet of water and still getting awesome action out of it, they come unglued on it. You can do the same thing downsized with the super line, but it works really, really well with the magnum size. And we got carp blowing up over here. It's crazy out here. Jeez. Ended up on the bank almost. They're tearing everything up. Wow. So what, anyway. Yeah, so getting back to this guy right here, you're going to need to step up your gear. You're going to need a, a more stout rod, like a seven yeah. and a half to eight foot, almost flipping stick. You're going to go with a, a 200 size reel braid to liter, 17, 20, 25 pound test, depending on the yeah. fish in your lake. But you, you're, you're going to step up from your traditional five inch fluke. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're trying to drive this giant, I mean, look at your difference. Where'd we set it? Well, here, compared to this little nose hook, up to that hook, I mean, it's no joke, the difference between these baits. So you really, really need to be able to drive that thing home. But guys, you can use a fluke for so much more than everyone else is using it for. And it's an inexpensive bait. I mean, you already own the hooks, most likely. Because it's the same hooks you use for a lot of other things. Same hook you use for Wacky Rigging a Senko or Texas Rigging a Senko yeah. or Flippin. You know, it's they're normal things that you already have in your boat. Now you have a whole different set of applications for your fluke. Different look, different location, different depth. You're going to smash them on that thing this year. Don't be the guy that, that overlooks it. Be the guy that goes out there and smashes them on it. It's interesting too because now that we've done so much underwater footage and we've done so many so many like videos with sight fish and all that stuff, the fluke, when you can see a fish and you can twitch it and make that thing react, it, I mean, you can catch those fish and just seeing how they react once you twitch them and pop it underwater and how they just and eat it. I don't know why it's such an overlooked bait, but subsurface, top water, super deep. It's just a, a proven fish catcher, and it you works. guys need to add flukes to your lineup. Yeah, you do. You do. Just try it. Uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you have questions or comments, leave them down there in the comments section. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.